Hey, it's Brian Bot. This is my cheat sheet for Thursday, September 6th. Okay, so let's take a look inside of the U.S. economy. And the survey says economy 1.2. Um, finished up my research for the third quarter. I think the growth rate is going to continue to come down in the U.S. economy uh, to about 1.2%, which, okay, good news. We're not in a recession. Uh, bad news, you're not going to see the unemployment rate come down, which leads me to the jobs report. Uh, we get that tomorrow, and so expectations. You know, Wall Street's expecting about 120,000 jobs created. I think we'd come in a little bit lighter of that. But the long and the short of it is unemployment will continue to be above 8%, I believe, for the remainder of the year. The one thing to watch here is whether or not you're actually going to have an impact based upon the election with there being less uncertainty just people acting upon that, whatever the outcome, in November and December, uh, employers in particular. Okay, um, airfare. How, how long of a trip, uh, how many miles, for example, or how long are you willing to be in a car before you decide that you're going to fly? Well, that decision is becoming a longer one, at least from a cost-value standpoint. Um, the new barometer, now about 500 miles. It'll be about 500 miles on average uh, that you would have to drive before becomes potentially a better cost value uh, and wear and tear on you and your car to uh, to go ahead and fly. And the reason is airfares are rising. The average airfare has risen 4.8% in 2012 thus far compared to last year, a significant increase. But even closer to home, the increases are much bigger. For example, PBI, one of the biggest increases in the average airfare in the country with the average airfare rising by more than 11% over last year. That's a big deal. And even if you head further south, the increase isn't as big, but like Fort Lauderdale's airport, it's more than a 5% increase year over year in the average ticket price. I'm all about taking care of local business, people close to home. I know some folks who uh, run PBI. They're, they're good folks. They're trying to do a better job here. Uh, so, you know, I still want to find reasons to utilize that airport uh, rather than going out of, uh, out of the area to try to find cheaper airfare. But because airfare is expensive, especially as we head towards the holidays, and if you're flying a family around, you really do want to do some comparison shopping on tickets because there can be a big, big difference in airfare between airports and between airlines right now. But the bottom line is, you're going to be paying more, uh, most likely, uh, than you were this time last year, perhaps significantly uh, more. Great inflation. Great inflation is alive and well in higher education. Now, this has been something that has been a creeping crud for a long time uh, in uh, you know, grade school. And now that it's washing through higher education, there are even greater concerns. See, ultimately, while great inflation might pass kids through school, might make kids feel a little bit better, it's not actually doing a service to them in the long run because it's about education after all. It's about learning. And if you don't retain education, if you don't obtain knowledge and skills that are useful in the real world, well, what have you necessarily accomplished? And that's the problem. New research has shown that it is far easier to get an A today in higher education than it was in the 60s, for example. 1961, 15% of all grades issued in a higher education facility were A's, just 15%. That's up to 43% today. But here's the bigger thing. Employers are finding that about a third of all college graduates are not capable of basic tasks to even make themselves useful in the workforce. 33% those that graduate, okay? Now here's the other piece. A, the research firm that worked on this comparison of grades over the, over the course of decades actually found that 69% of students were not capable of performing basic everyday tasks. Basic everyday tasks, graduates, 69%. So what are we necessarily teaching them? And here's the bigger problem. By the great inflation, keeping them in the edu higher education system, passing them through, yeah, okay, you get, a, you get a piece of paper, but you've accumulated more debt, and if you don't have the skills, well, you have a higher chance of being unemployed. Is this perhaps part of the reason that the 2011 collegiate graduating class is staring at greater than 50% un and underemployment right now, more than a year later? So it's not necessarily doing a service to the kids, it's doing a disservice to everybody. That's the cheat sheet for today. Check out the physical cheat sheet. A lot more there. We'll see you tomorrow.